My next guest is a renowned world-class bowler. She's fierce, she's fearless, and she's feisty. She's been part of the Momentum Protest Setup for 14 years now, and with so many accolades under her belt, she continues to set the stage alight. Who else can it be other than the amazing Shabmim Ishmael? <laughs> this is where the sun comes in. <laughs> 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 Shabi, how you been, man? Yeah, I've been really good. I'm not gonna lie. I think since last year till up to now, we am currently sitting with you. Yeah. It's been really great. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think the way I've been playing my cricket, my lifestyle, being with family, everything has just been phenomenal. And I'm sure a lot of people at home want to find out where this whole journey started for you, particularly in cricket. Where did it all start? Yeah, 100%. I mean, while well, I never really had cricket back home, um, well, we started off a, a club team within our school, which never really went well, but there was really girls that was interested. But before I get there, well, I was at the age of uh, 15, I got picked up from a cricket ground playing with Buren Hendricks and Vernon Philander. We actually played together on the open school field. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not forgetting my cousin, Mama Tias, and they're actually currently playing for the Warriors as well. So the three of us, it was very competitive when I was young, so I started off playing with the guys at the age of about maybe 11, 12 years old, I used to play with Buren, Vernon, the big Vern, yeah. and, and, and obviously my cousin, where it was actually at that stage, it was very competitive. Yeah. Where every Saturday we'd come together, we'll tape the tennis ball, and we'd play cricket, and I used to come with my own bat, my own ball, yeah. and we just play competitive cricket against each other, and basically that's where it all started. Mm -hmm. And then obviously I played with my brothers as well, in the backyard probably bowling me against my face everywhere else. But you know what, it was fun back then. And it, if you think about it, back in the day when I was a little kid, I'm, I'm still little though, just my age says something different. <laughs> I get you. So, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, back in the day when, if you think about it, if I, if I look back at the years, I'm very, I'm very honored and I'm very, I'm very, um, what's the word, I'm very privileged of because of where I come from and the background and obviously getting to play with Vern, with Buren, with my brothers and then sitting here today obviously playing, playing for my country, it's, it's a huge honour for me and that's one thing is that I don't take it for granted, not one day because mm. nev you never know when this can just slip away from you and I mean like I said the past couple of years my cricket has just taken a huge toll and I'm just like I said I'm, I'm really enjoying my cricket at the moment so mm. I'm hoping that can just go higher and higher for me. Mm. For me. And playing and competing against your Buren Hendricks and Vernon as you speak, oh. would you say <laughs> would you say that obviously them progressing to playing for the national side, did that become a dream for you also one day to play for the national side? You know what, I'm not gonna lie to you. I actually had a conversation with Buren the other day and we were we were talking and I told him like not once did we ever think about, you know, what the South Africa or even a proper club team or provincial or something like that. It's like everything happened so quickly. And now if we look back and and we, and we talk about, you know what, we played actually on the ground where we didn't even have a pitch, we were basically playing with crates, bats and tennis balls and now we sit there and we look back and we think, gosh, time really flies. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's amazing, I mean, if I think about it, it, I know one thing for sure that it does make a person much better to play with actually with the males yes. and a lot of people say it's a male dominated sport guys mm -hmm. please get that out of your head it's not true That's it. I strongly believe the way females are playing at them at the moment all around the world it is great cricket yeah and I mean it just shows that you know what not only is it a male dominated sport it's a female dominated mm -hmm. sport as well and I think it showed in the last couple of years in the World Cup how Women's cricket in general has taken a toll around the world, which is really great for us. Yeah, and I mean, you are one of the fastest bowlers in this entire world. I mean, you clock in, I think, 128 kilometers per hour. That speed. Where did you say the speed and this love for bowling started? Yeah, so basically I started off as a batsman. Not a lot of people know that, but I used to love batting. And I used to hate bowling because I was very lazy. I didn't want to run from this long run up, run in and bowl. And I was like, no, why just pick yeah. up a bat and just hit the ball? Yeah. And I'm sure Lizelle is loving that. I'm not going to put her out there, but I'm sure Lizelle loves it. Because she just goes there, she picks up the bat and she just hits sixes everywhere. Like, it's, it's so nice to watch. Yeah. And then you get me. I just want to go then, I just want to eat a couple of fours, be happy with what I have. Mm -hmm. And then at the age of um, 15, no, actually at the age of 14, I started playing for a club called Primrose back in Cape Town. And that's where I actually developed the love and the passion for bowling, where my coach told me, you know what, just try it, just pick up the ball. And you know, there's only three stumps here. If you hit that, you're good to go. It was, it was, at, I actually ran in at ease and I kept on hitting the stumps. So it was, it was just natural, just came natural. And then my coach spoke to my mom and my, my late grandfather and he actually said, you know what, this girl has immense talent. Yeah. 
like a two scratch then and I don't know, I just wanna play, I just wanna have fun. Yeah. Like till today I'm still playing, I'm still having fun. And that is what I took out from the little days that I had yeah. up till now. It's all about having fun, obviously having passion, working hard behind scenes, but the fun factor it doesn't change anything. Mm. And it's it's always nice playing in an environment where it's a family, where you know you can trust each other, like we win as a team. And the most important part is when we lose as a team. Mm. That that is what counts the most for me. And I think the way we portrayed ourselves over the past couple of years, we have really grown. But then obviously going back, so my coach obviously told um, my mom and my late grandpa that you know what, she has immense talent and then I just developed the love and the passion for for actually for bowling, which was really nice. And that's where I took it. A couple of, I think it was about two years later, I was 16 years old and the coach gave my grandfather a call and said, you know what, I know she hasn't she hasn't gone for trials, but mm. I wanted to be in my Western Cape team. Someone apparently pulled out and they pushed me in there and that's where I developed the name, The Demon. Oh, heck. <laughs> the Demon. I'm not glad that. Uh, so I played my first couple of games, I broke the bail, I broke the stumps. We, I, was just, I was just running in at ease. Because yes. I said, ah. Oh, it's, it can't be that hard. You're just gonna run here and you're gonna eat the stumps. That's it. I took a five. I took a four. For I was on a hat trick. There was like six or seven games played. I played with Yulani for it as well. Mm. Where people were just crazy. Like it was so crazy that you know what? That I couldn't believe that it was so easy. Just yeah. picking up all and running and bowling. Yeah. And that's where I actually developed the love and the passion for for actually for bowling. But then tell me where this aggression and this passion and this fearlessness comes from. Because oh, that, I mean, that's easy. Shibi, when you <laughs> when you're on the field, you become a completely different person. The passion just comes through. Where does that come from? Yeah, it's I'm not gonna lie. I'm probably one of the naughtiest off the field. But yes. once I once I cross that rope. I'm a firm believer of you not, I just turn into peace mode. I'm not sure what happens, but I just switch. And there's there's always a fine line between actually having fun off the field, but when it comes to your job, where we're professional, we get paid to do it, that's my job, to cook out there with pride, with passion, and actually do what's, what's best for the country and do what's best for the team, first, of, first and foremost. And then obviously, yeah, so as a youngster growing up, and that is why I had the T-shirt number 89, I developed love and passion for Andre now. His T-shirt number was 89. And a lot of people actually think I was born in 89. I'll take that, that's just so by I the way. Actually. I will take that, by the way. It makes me a year younger, yes. but that's fine. So yeah, I developed the love and the passion for um, Andre Nell, I watched him as a youngster, he used to bowl bounces. And I always ask mommy, why does he want to bowl this guy's head off? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, why would you want to hurt someone like my coach told me? There's three stumps, just bowl it. That's it. Yeah. And then I, 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 for the past couple of years when I was young, so I sat with my mom and my grandpa watching cricket and Andre now was just, he was, he was the bomb mm. for me. Mm. He's still the bomb he though, was, he's not playing, yes. but he was aggressive. When he walked on the field, he had that eye and whenever he looks at the batman, he always raises his yeah. eyebrow. I remember that clearly. It's just something about him that really clicked and I wanted to be just like him. Yeah. And I told my mom, I didn't ask, I didn't even ask my mom or my grandpa, what is your favorite number? I just went straight Andre now. And told today I can sit here and, and I'll be happy and I'm proud to say, you know what, I'm wearing number 89 because that was my first, I, my idol and my rock basically because I used to look up to him and I wanted to do exactly what he does on the pitch. So you run in, you hardcore, you want to get wickets and you get wickets, that passion and that aggression that you actually shows, I wouldn't say really it's aggression, a lot of people think that, you know what, I'm this aggressive person but I'm actually, I'm, I actually wear my heart on my sleeve, I'm very softy, I cry most of the times but no one actually sees, I go in my little corner and I hide it and I, some tears come up and I just wipe and I say, okay, game day now, let's go, do mm. the job. <laughs> so yeah, and then basically after that, I de developed um, some more feelings or love, should I say, for yeah. Tailstein, mm. where he came in and he flipped now when he started, it was gas all over the show. Bounces flying, his test wickets was high, ODI, T20, and he could shape the ball inside out, and mm. I was just like, okay, I'm stuck now. I'll take a bit of both, so it was more, where Andre now was this aggressive type where he went at batters and then, well, Dalesen has the exact same thing, but he had just more pace. Yeah. No offense to Andre now, but there was, I took a bit of both, I tried to put it together, and that's basically what made me today. Mm. And have you met any of the players? Yeah, I'm, I met Andre now, as I, I still speak actually to Cass Naidu, where we say, you know what, I still speak about you to Andre now, and he loves you. And the last time I actually saw him here, he's like, you know, Shibs, I love you. I love the way you bowl. I was amazing. like, thanks. And that is what, you know, that's actually what pumps me. If people actually come to me and tell you, you know what, I, I'm, I appreciate that you look up to me as an idol. Because that's one thing that actually pushes me, it motivates me to do better. Apart from my mom and my family, that pushes me. But if your idol actually comes up to you and you're like, whoa, 
at this age, yes, I'm, I also play for South Africa, but I mean, your idols coming up to you and saying, you know what, I love the way you do A, B, and C. That just motivates you to do even better. Yeah. And that's just, I'm just, uh, I'm a happy go lucky person at the moment. No, you absolutely are amazing. Um, you've had so many amazing moments on the field. Um, I, I, I can't help but think about that Pfeiffer against oh. Pakistan. You know, tell me about how magical that day was and you getting that Pfeiffer. Do you wake up feeling like you're going to have a good day on the field? You know what, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I was actually with um, Tisha Chetty that night and I was with Denisha Devna Ryan that night. And I woke up and we were chilling outside and we were having our green tea and just talking about the game and how it's going and how good the series has been going. And the next morning I went and I said, you know what, coach, I have this good feeling. I just won four wickets today. Wow. Just won four. And Trish actually sat out that game. And then when I got that Pfeiffer, mm -hmm. like I, I didn't want the Pfeiffer, honestly. I just wanted four wickets. That's the honest truth. And I woke up and I said, today I want four wickets. And you know, you just get that feeling and that butter. So you know, today is going to be a good day. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes you try extra hard and it doesn't happen. But I just went out there. I just played with freedom. I played with fun. And it was just, it was a nice combined feeling with the team where everyone's behind you they want you to do well and i just ran in there and it was just bowling at ease yeah and i was on my last ball of the 3.5 yes said, you know what yes i remember and if you actually look at the video i actually smiled before i ran uh, yes. before i actually ran before i ran into bowl that that last ball i actually smiled and i didn't even take note of it and she was like do you know that you actually smiled before it lost? And I was like, no, I didn't. And I looked at it and I was like, oh my word. Yeah. It's like behind people that they probably think, you know, ah, she knows she has this. Yes. But I didn't actually think about it. I just said, oh, four weeks, I'm happy. That's all I wanted. And you got more than that. Exactly. And then I got the five and then it's career best figures and it's, mm -hmm. it's a woo -ha. And I'm like, well, it doesn't just stop there. I actually want to be get better and better. And you know what? I always say, you know what? You don't have to only do well and click good. You need to be a better human being every day, and that is one thing that motivates me, drives me to be a better family person, spend more time with family. Yes, cricket is very important to me, I understand that. But I mean, there is a fine line between cricket and family, and I'm, and I'm balancing the two, and, and I mean, it's been working for me for the past five, six years, and I'm, and I'm like I said, I'm very happy. Mm. And something that you're also passionate about is really giving off your knowledge and expertise to young people and players that are coming up. Where, where did you think you developed that, um, you know, inclination to want to give off the, the knowledge to younger players coming up? Yeah, that, um, so basically in 2009, I met my first bowling coach. Well, I had a bowling coach before that, but not really a bowling coach, but someone that was just coaching me. But I met my first actual mentor bowling coach, which was Henry Williams. I met him in 2009, I would never forget this game. I think I got hit for like 20 in an over where I think it was either Dotson or Taylor came out and they were smoking me all around the park and I didn't know what's going on because I'm a youngster. Yeah. I just want to have fun running and bowl that 3-6, that's it. And I got smoked all around the park, I'm not going to lie to you. It was, it was very embarrassing, I actually wanted to dig the hole. Cut that piece of grass and then just get inside. You know what Mr. Bean does in yeah. the goal? <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to cut it up and just get inside. That's all I I didn't want to be seen. So fine. Henry Williams, so I didn't know him as Henry, I just knew him as this guy. So he walks in there and he asks, who is that girl that got hit for 20 something in the over? And I, as a youngster, I'm scared. So I get up and I said, it's me, sir. And he said, come with me. Get your get your boots and come with me. I said, okay, tackies or spikes? Get your tackies, let's go. I'm scared, I'm panicking, I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't know what to expect. No one is telling me anything. I'm sitting there, everyone is laughing, and I'm a youngster, and I've just sat quietly, and I, okay, I took my tackies and I went. And he said, okay, today, first and foremost, I'm gonna teach you that no one hits you like this ever again. Sure. And I was like, but I don't think that's possible because you know that it is a baddest game. I don't believe in that. I believe if you're well prepared, yes, it might happen, but if you're well prepared and your execution is good, we'll take it any day, then you, then you can get it. But if you don't prepare well, anything can happen on the day. And since 2009 till current date, he's been my mentor, he's been my coach. He taught me how to swing the ball in out, he taught me a bounce, he taught me a slow ball, he taught me a yoga, he taught me everything that I literally know today. And I mean, I'm really grateful. I mean, from 2009 till current date, if I walk out to the, onto that field tomorrow and say, you know what, H, I'm struggling with maybe the ball that's swing, I could send him maybe two clips of me just bowling ball and you tell ships, this is what you're doing wrong. Yeah. And it's so amazing that you can actually connect with a person like that. And the most important part for me is that what he taught me is that, you know, 
being your own bowling coach. Mm. And that is why when I go overseas, when I play here, and yes, Dylan is a, is a great person. He helps me a lot. I always ask, pick his brain off, what can I do better as a person? But then also, 4-H, do tell me, you know what, be your own bowling coach. Cap captain your own space first of all, know what you want when you're going into the game, when you're in training, know what you want. And then, even, even Dylan knows when I go overseas, no one actually coaches me because I know what I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. The only time I'll come to and ask advice is if I'm really struggling and I'll be like, coach, can you please help me with this? That's the only time. Other than that, I don't really like people coaching me. Um, if it's technical, then I'd rather go to the guy that's been working with me for since 2009 till current date, or I'd actually ask Dylan because, I mean, he's known me for the past couple of years also, and it's just really great working with him. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, everything that you've been learning from all these coaches, you you like, give off to to the younger players coming. No, hundred percent, and that's why I said he also taught me to be my own bowling coach. So it's very nice for me to you know what, give my knowledge out. And I mean, playing at the highest level is not always going to be great. And I also don't think that you know what, one one game is actually going to you know what make you a bad player or a bad season is going to make you a bad player. I just think it's how you perform and how you bounce back. And I'm a strong believer of you know what a bounce back ability. That's that's great for me. Yeah. To wrap up the show, tell me if if there was any one word you could use to describe your entire career ever since you started, what word would it be? I'd say fierce. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Like I said, fast, fearless and feisty. Make sure that you catch us next time as we interview the next Momentum Project players. From Elisera and Shibi, it's goodbye.